unlocking the auto hi everybody welcome back if this is your first time here just welcome this vehicular module is a 2014 chevrolet cruise and customer states it had a check engine light um, it does not appear to have said check engine light anymore. They, uh, they went to uh, one of the parts retailers and they got the free code scan diagnostic. And the code said something about a knock sensor. And so they would like the knock sensor replaced. Um, I'm just going to uh, attempt to diagnose this real quick like, just to verify that the knock sensor is indeed faulty. And uh, once I come up with some kind of information, we'll proceed from there. Okay, let's shed some light on the subject so I can plug in my dangly bits here. This little dangly is dangling too much. It's been broken. It's not gonna work. Beep, powering on, automatic ID, initializing satellites linking up in outer space communication protocols initiated okay we've got a p0324 knock sensor module performance symptom code zero zero uh test failed since dcc clear hey, i have just reviewed the uh flow chart for diagnosing this concern and uh, step one is to inspect the knock sensor and make sure it is securely fastened to the engine block it also states to uh, inspect the wiring and harness to make sure that it's not rubbing or chafing against anything causing an open circuit or a loose wire and it also says to inspect for any loose brackets or uh, or hardware that could be rattling around um, triggering a false positive for a knock concern um, that being said I've already popped into the hood and taken a look uh, underneath there to uh, look for anything obvious up at the top uh, I have not found anything in that location, so I'm going to lift the vehicle and inspect it from the bottom side. At that point, we can get a visual on the actual sensor and its wiring harness and make a determination from there. If uh, no obvious faults are found, the next step states to replace the knock sensor and, uh, and then retest. This is all assuming, of course, that the engine is not pinging and spark knocking and does not have a mechanical failure condition, which I have already verified that it does not. The engine runs smooth, and there is no spark knock or pinging. Right there. You know, while I'm here, I wanna go off on a bit of a tangent. Um, a couple of you guys were asking me about the lifts and the lift points, and uh, I figured now is a good opportunity to explain such things. So we've got our lifts, uh, or lift arms, there's the front and the rear, of course, and then the feet have three positions. You've got flat, and slightly raised and then very much raised actually four positions because we can go all the way up like so and this configuration if you go all the way up with one and you end up going all the way up with the other you want to make sure that they're pointed away from each other or towards each other i prefer away just to get as much spread as possible on the mounting points um, you don't ever have them in the same direction because if something were to come and press on the vehicle or you pry on it or move it around you could theoretically make it collapse so if they're opposing each other in the direction they're going then one could move but the other one cannot move uh, that being said we just need to flat rack this one and we'll do that under the the body right there there's a large section of the body with a lot of structural support so we will choose that location there and then back here, that's not gonna fit. I'm gonna flip it around. Back here, we'll put it on this pinch weld right there. Um, these pinch welds, front and rear, are acceptable places to lift the vehicle from. There's enough structure there to support the weight. And now you know. Moving on up. Also, while we're on the subject, do you hear that clicking? That is a ratcheting mechanism for the safety locks. See, there's a, uh, what do you want to call it? Maybe a pawl? I could call it a pawl. Let's see if we can see in there. Oh, yeah, there it is right there, that little guy. What this thing does is ride along 
this part of the lift back here and that little lever or pawl meets uh, those little cutouts and those are the safety locks. So as this is going up, we're watching the locks past or pass by the stop. Right now, there's only hydraulic pressure supporting the car. Once this is all the way up, one more. I want to set it down on those locks. There we go. Now it's safe and hydraulic pressure is not supporting the vehicle. So if it blows up a line or one of the seals and the rams, the vehicle can't fall down. If this is not sitting on the locks and something unfortunate were to happen and it were to fall, it may catch the lock, but that momentum could shear off the lock surface and then make the car free fall and fall over sideways and, and kill me. And that would be bad. So we always set them down on the safety locks. Now, even though I've done this a hundred billion times, I always visually put eyes on each and every lift point before really, really going deep under the car. I don't want to feel comfortable down there unless I know that our lift points are set up nicely and that they are safe. I should also mention uh, one step, which I kind of did skip uh, due to complacency, but once you take the weight of the car and you get it up off the ground about an inch or so, you want to go to the front and rear bumpers and just kind of shake the car. That way, if anything is going to be unsettled or move or um, break or any anything that's unforeseen, if that were to occur, you want that to occur down here, not all the way up here. And, and I did skip that step and I shouldn't have, but uh, like I said, complacency just got me right then and there. Um, where I don't see a knock sensor. It's supposed to be on the engine block somewhere. Maybe it's on this side. I don't know. To all data for me. Okay, I pulled up a photograph on all data and I found that it is located behind the starter solenoid. So see this wire right here going to the engine block. That's uh, here. I'll just, I'll just stick you guys way way up there. That's it right there bolted to the block. So I need to reach way, way high up and unbolt that. And it looks like it's fastened with a, an e-torx of some sort. There must be a chairman engineer involved with this engine. And for the record, this is the 1.4 liter turbine powered four cylinder in the Chevy Cruze. These also came naturally aspirated and some of them came with a two liter turbo diesel, which that's my favorite because I like diesels. I'm going to let this down to a more comfortable working height and we're going to remove that sensor. Uh, the customer has supplied us with a replacement that the parts store has sold us. Um, I was not tasked with actually diagnosing this concern. They, they actually just wanted the, uh, the sensor replaced so as far as i've gone into it so far was kind of on my own dime and uh, not at the request of the customer uh, they figured that for the price of the part and the four tenths that it cost to replace it that was cheaper and more uh, economical when weighing risk versus reward than it would be to have me diagnose it and then potentially end up replacing the same the same part which i, I can't really disagree with um I mean, I can and I can't. Uh, however, it's such an easy part to replace and it's so cheap that we're just going to go ahead and throw one in and see if that produces the desired result. Okay, so I need to apologize for the bad view and the bad lighting. Uh, this is close quarters combat in here and I don't have much space to play with. So you guys might end up just staring at the back of my hand for a minute. Anyway, there's the, that's the plug. By some miracle, I was able to disconnect that. I thought that was going to be a little harder than it was. By the look of it, that sensor is an E12. So I'm going to try to get it out with that. I busted out the 3H drive, quarter inch sized, snap on ratchet. It's an oldie but a goodie. Let's get some reach in there. Yeah, this is a pretty tight squeeze here. It's all happening by feel, because I can see nothing. Reverse click. Okay, came loose. It appears to be unthreading with ease. This is good. 
Okay. Sensors come. Oh, it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. And there she is. Uh, basically, the way this thing functions is if there is engine knock or detonation detected within inside of the block, this thing will create an AC, I believe it's an AC waveform, and it will send that via its connector and wire to the ECM. The ECM will determine that there is uh, pre-ignition or engine knocking, and it'll actually turn back timing in an attempt to uh, arrest the knocking condition. Now, if there's a physical problem, like a physical engine knock, a, a rod knocking, or a, a loud lifter, or something like that, then uh, that will do no good. This, uh, the purpose of this system is to stop pre-detonation or engine pinging, as I said before. Okie dokes, the new unit appears to be identical to the old unit. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Here, don't need that one. Uh, these are actually very sensitive. They have a, uh, a crystal inside, which is what produces the AC frequency. Uh, therefore, they must not be over torqued and probably should not be dropped. One must take care with these things as I'm about to drop it. Okay, let's put you guys back up here. Oh, back to your terrible vantage point where you can't see going in one-handed to fit this guy okay I found the hole with my finger Let's just commit that location to memory there's nothing to index the sensor that was loud there's nothing to index the sensor to its proper orientation so I'm just kind of doing that by feel allowing space for the connector to plug in I think that feels good Let's back up and see uh, Nobody can see. Um, it's pointed up a little too high. Right there. Let's see how that looks. Okay. And a wee bit of torque will secure it to the block. Specs about 15 foot pounds, so not much. Click. That was it. And no, I'm not torque wrenching it because uh, I'm not going to be able to fit a torque wrench up here, even my little one. Come on, connector. Become connected. There we go. Connector, quick. All right, let's get uh, let's get out of here. Lower this thing down and uh, clear out those trouble codes, and uh, we'll run this engine under the conditions that allow the monitor to check knock sensor performance and it will see if that DTC starts to pend or return. Ah, flashlight gravity. Off. Flashlight powering down. So I'm undecided. I don't know if this uh, video is about lift safety or knock sensors or if it's just me rambling. Maybe a little both or all three, or how many instances that was. Yeah, definitely rambling. Cut. Okay, let us restarting the engine. Powering on complete. All right, let's clear this trouble code. No, 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 code cleared. Let's go back into codes menu, make sure it did not instantly set. It did not. So uh, this thing is below operating temperature. I'll be back in a moment. Let's let this thing heat up. It has to be at operating temp for the monitor for the knock sensors to, to run. And I will also have to hold engine RPM up above 1000, I believe is what it said. So uh, as soon as this reaches operating temp, we're gonna rev this up some, hold it about 15, 1600 or so. And we're just gonna sit here and wait for the monitor to complete. And if it has a passing test result for the knock sensor circuit, then this is a confirmed good, good fix. Um, if it fails, then uh, our, uh, our, our, our parts cannon diagnostic procedure was a failure, and then we will have to perform actual diagnostic on the situation. And again, that was not my call. No re-necessary. Uh, I don't like to just put parts in to diagnose things, but um, 
Uh, customers get what customers want, and when they decline actual diagnostics, we just do it their way. It's, they're, they're an informed customer, and, uh, and, and who am I to argue? Because I do what I'm told, mostly. Okay, we fast forwarded about five minutes. Operating temperature has been reached. Let's idle this up and we will check the status of that P0324 trouble code. So we're gonna have to manually enter it, P0324. Do, 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 do. Yes. And the monitor has run P0324 knock sensor module performance. It has passed. It has passed since we cleared. Last test has passed and it is not requesting a check engine light. So uh, this knock sensor circuit, after replacing that, has passed all criteria. The ECM has decided it is operating as designed and uh, our work is done here. Become disconnected now. There. All right, guys, this mission is complete. I am going to park this and uh, find something else to do with my day. Before I go, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I want to let you know that I appreciate you staying all the way to the end. Since you've made it this far, I'm assuming that you like this video. If you did like this video, please communicate that to me effectively by tappy tapping that like button down below. That is what lets YouTube and myself know that I've done a good job here. And if YouTube thinks I've done a good job, it's far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me. That's also good for them. So again, and as always, thanks for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Parking the auto and powering down. End of transmission. Juan doesn't know I'm here. Hey, can you go up on it? Other way. Fast, 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 fire fries, fire fries, fire fries, fryer fries. Oh, you, fryer fries? What are you guys talking about? I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Fire <laughs> fries! <laughs> Eat your fries, damn it. <laughs> fire fries.